snacks and water at the table over there if you'd like. As you have noticed, we are recording this meeting so that people who are not able to attend tonight can still learn about the project. And this will is live streaming right now on um, Government Access, Channel 96, and on the New Mix YouTube page. Um, it will be repeated throughout the coming weeks on Government Access and Community Access. Uh, after the presentation, there will be a Q&A session. So if you don't feel comfortable being on camera or speaking into a microphone, uh, my colleagues Cole and Jacqueline, they're raising their hands in the back, can come to you, you tell them your question, and they'll ask it for you. Um, before I turn it over to John Dean, the project manager from Condot, um, a word from Alba. Buenas noches. Si alguien necesita interpretación, por favor levante la mano. Gracias. Good evening. Oh, there we go. Hi, everybody. My name is John Dean. I am the project manager from the Connecticut DOT. Um, this is this is a conceptual public information meeting and SEPA scoping meeting for state project number 151340, which is the proposed removal of the I-84 eastbound exit 21 off ramp. So, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening. It was nice to talk to some of you. Um, we'll have a presentation, as Anna mentioned, and then uh, time for time for Q and A. So, real quickly, the uh, project team. I'm going to introduce them from the Connecticut DOT. Mike Calabrese is our division chief of highway design. Neil Patel is the principal engineer of the highway design um, major highways unit. Again, my name is John Dean. I'm the project manager for this project. And Joe Belrose is the project engineer. HNTB Corporation is the prime consultant. Um, tonight you'll be hearing from Rudy Franciamore, who's the project manager from HNTB. David Schweitzer is the technical advisor. And Anna Mariotti is the public involvement specialist. So tonight's agenda, we're going to give you an overview of the Connecticut Environmental Policy Act, otherwise known as SEPA. We're going to talk about the new mix, which um, I, I see some familiar faces here you may be aware of. That's the um, plan to replace the mix master in 2045, so we'll give an, an overview of that. Um, we'll get into the proposed improvements for the removal of exit 21. We'll get into the what is the need.
SEPA scoping is defined as, of, as the gathering and analysis of information that a state agency will use to establish the extent of it, environmental review for a proposed state project. The scoping process begins when we publish a notice of the project in the environmental monitor, which in turn kicks off a minimum 30-day comment period. The environmental monitor is an online publication run by the Connecticut Council of Environmental Quality that contains information for and tracks the projects that are required to go through the SEPA process. For this project, we published the scoping notice on Tuesday, March 7th, and the comment period will run until the end of business on Monday, April 10th. And I'd just like to point out that we'll be soliciting comments throughout the project, but this specifically refers to SEPA scoping. The idea is to solicit comments from the various state regulatory agencies, such as the Connecticut Department of en Energy and Environmental Protection, or DEEP, the Publi Department of Public Health, and the State Historic Preservation Office, just to name a few, as well as municipalities and the public to help identify any potential alternatives and then to also help identify any specific environmental resources that need to be analyzed in the project area. The local community often has a unique understanding of the project area, including not only the resources in the project area, but also any areas of community concerns or issues that we need to be looking for. Ultimately, this process will help us determine if there are any significant environmental impacts associated with the project and if there is a need to undertake a very detailed and comprehensive environmental impact evaluation, or EIE. So this is a very high-level chart of the SEPA process. The boxes outlined in red are the steps we're currently undertaking. So as I mentioned, we published a notice in the Environmental Monitor, which kicked off the SEPA scoping phase of the project. We decided to undertake a SEPA review for this project because of the closure of the exit. Once the scoping period ends, we will review all the comments received, consider any environmental impacts, including socioeconomic and community impacts, determine if any have the potential to be significant, and based on that information, we will determine if an environmental impact evaluation is needed or not. An EIE is a detailed and comprehensive document that analyzes any significant environmental impacts and also compares the impacts of any alternatives considered for a project. Once a decision is made on whether to undertake an EIE or not, that determination and the justification behind it will be published in the Environmental Monitor along with the synopsis of the comments we received and our responses to those comments. Finally, in summary, SEPA identifies and evaluates projects' potential impacts to the environment, it enables the project team to judge the appropriateness of proceeding with the action, and it provides the opportunity for public review and comment through any early scoping process and later review of any environmental impact evaluations if one is produced. Now I'll turn it over to David Schweitzer to talk about the new mix, overview, and breakout projects. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Um, my name is David Schweitzer. I am the technical advisor on this project, but for the uh, overall reconstruction, I'm the deputy project manager on that, and that is where we're going to start out and give you a quick overview of that. Uh, what, we, what the uh, NUMEX project is, is for it's a long-term plan uh, for the future of the MixMaster. What we're doing is we're analyzing all rehabilitation and replacement options because we want to modernize the intersection, uh, the interchange. We want to improve its safety and functionality. We want to improve the function of the local roadway network and the interchange. We want to reduce, con reduce congestion. We want to align with the city's economic development and also with the community plans. And what can come out of this is there are projects uh, that will break out of this and will occur over time. So these types of projects that we're talking about can be early action projects, uh, which are st uh, standalone improvements to either the highway or the local roadway network, or they could be further down the road in these near-term pro um, near projects or the long-term projects. Now the near-term projects, 
those are projects that will be a little bit more phase funded and will take place out on the legs of the interchange, more out on Route 8 or on 84, away from the core. And then the long-term project will be right at the core of the interchange uh, when that is getting reconstructed. So this is, this is an approximate uh, schedule that we're pushing forward on this. We have these early action projects uh, that have been identified. We're looking to start those in the mid-20s and carry them through the end of this decade. We're looking at these near-term projects to start in the late 20s and carry through the 2030s with the long-term project starting in the mid-2030s and carrying through its completion in 2045. And the reason the year 2040, 2045 is chosen is because that is the existing rehab project that is going on now, which is separate from the new mix project, is adding 25 years of service life to the existing interchange. That'll get us to the year 20, 2045. But we're here to talk tonight about er the early action projects, or more specifically, this one early action project, which is the removal of the exit 21 off-ramp from I-84 eastbound. Now these early action projects, they're smaller, standalone improvements to the highway or the local roadway network. They're intended to improve safety and traffic operations. These are all done in coordination with the city of Waterbury. And there's a review process on these that's separate from the overall New Mix project. Now, a number of these early action projects have been identified. There have been reports written on most of them, or all of, uh, most of them at this point. Some of them have been incorporated into the rehab project, where it would be more efficient to construct them as the rehab project is finishing up. And then others are going into the preliminary design phase, where this project that we're talking about tonight is headed. So we're going to get in now into the need for this project. And b before we get there, one thing I do want to point out is that we're going to be putting some terms out in front of you that uh, I want to review with you at this point. One thing we're going to one thing we're going to talk about is referring to the main line, and by the main line, we're meaning 84 eastbound, which runs left to right across the screen. Now we'll also have on-ramps that come on, such as here from Highland Avenue, which is which where the ramp comes and tapers into the main line and creates a merge, because the merge this traffic from Highland Avenue needs to merge into the main line traffic. Similarly, down here at exit 22, we have traffic from the main line or from I-84 that diverges to exit the main line. Then we also have a situation here near exit 21 where we have the Route 8 northbound traffic coming on and it gets into its own lane and if you do not move from this lane, you will be exited off of exit 21. And this, this additional lane is what we refer to as an auxiliary lane. But what's important about an auxiliary lane is that you have two, you have several maneuvers that take place here. The primary ones are you either coming from Route 8 northbound and you're exiting at exit 21, or you're coming from Route 8 and you're looking to merge into the main line. But also at this same time, you can have your mainline traffic that's looking to diverge to get to exit 21. So in these areas on the auxiliary lane where we have both a merge and a diverge, we call those weave sections. Now it's important to understand with these, the merge, the diverges, and the weaves, we refer to them as conflict points because these are areas where vehicles will be making maneuvers, drivers will be making decisions, and vehicles will be moving at differing speeds. So as we look at this, we're looking at mainline 84 that comes along and has those ramps. We add in the on-ramp from exit 18 
And then we can see that there are conflict points that develop at the merge and then at the two diverges. Similarly, we have the traffic from Route 8 southbound, which is a lane add. This is where the third lane is added onto I-84 eastbound. And with this, even though it is signed that people should not make these maneuvers, there are still people that will come and look to diverge to exit 21 or to exit 22. The third set is where we have the Route 8 northbound ramp coming on into our short auxiliary lane or our weave section. And then we can have both the merge and diverge on the weave section and then the diverge to exit 22. Now these don't happen singularly like we just walked through and showed you, but all of these happen at the same time uh, as, as you drive along 84. Now with the new mix project and where this project was identified, we did a lot of data collection. And we could tell that due to the congestion, and this here is this auxiliary lane here coming up from Route 8, and this is exit 21, where the traffic is backing up and in, in causing the congestion further to the west. So what we were able to do with our model is we were able to project it forward. And what we found is when this section of 84 eastbound would reach its failing point, is in the year 2031. So then what this model is showing, this here is exit 18 tapering in from Highland Avenue. We have the ramp coming on from Route 8 northbound. You can see the car starting to back up. We get into our weave section here on that short auxiliary lane. And you can really see how the traffic is starting to fail. And then it starts to lighten up as we head eastward towards exit 22. So this is where we found was the need for this project due to the traffic congestion, the traffic operations, and how I-84 eastbound would operate at that time. So just looking back at a summary on the project need, we have the substandard distances for the ramp weaves, merges, and diverges which creates a high crash location with recurring congestion, the deficient traffic operations, and then we also have a bridge which is in poor condition. So with that, I'm gonna turn this over to my colleague, Rudy Francimori, who's gonna walk you through the purpose and the components of the solution. Thank you, David. Uh, again, my name is Rudy Francimori, and I'm the project man. I'm the project manager for 151 340. And thank you again for coming out tonight. Project purpose and the components. The project purpose is to increase the safety along the stretch of I-84 eastbound between exits 19 and 22. Also, to improve the traffic operations in that same area of 19 to 22 eastbound. And as a result of that. The, we're anticipating that the air quality is going to also improve because we are eliminating or reducing that traffic congestion through this area. David described the problems with this section of I-84 eastbound and the solution that we came up with was to eliminate exit 21 from this troubled area here as David explained with all the uh, merges, diverges and weaves with all those conflict points. After looking at this area, we determined that eliminating exit 21 permanently on 84 eastbound would drastically improve the traffic flows through this area. Just by eliminating the exit 21 permanently, what we're doing is we're adding what David described as the auxiliary lane or that continuous lane along 84. We're adding about 600 feet of through lane. So the traffic that's coming up from eight from Route 8 northbound has a lot of additional time to merge into the main line or continue to the uh, to exit to exit 22 to the two-lane uh, exit 22 in this area here 
Now, if you think about that, that's 600 feet is the equivalent of about two football fields. And that distance adds about six to eight seconds of uh, travel time, depending on speed, for a driver to make a decision whether to continue along uh, to exit 22, or they have that additional time to continue on 84 eastbound. The next slide is a uh, close-up of this area. Again, here is exit 21 being removed, and the exit 22 is also going to get restriped, so it's striped with two lanes. And what we're what this is called is a uh, it's a decision lane. The third lane of 84 eastbound is going to become a decision lane where you can either continue on to exit 22 or continue straight at the fork or at the uh, decision point, continue straight on, uh, on 84 eastbound. And as David explained through our traffic analysis, we determined that the, 2030, the 2031 design year is going to be that critical breaking point of the traffic if nothing is done in this area, if we don't close exit 21. We've determined that the traffic breakdown or the, the traffic operations come to a complete breakdown and there's going to be severe congestion. What this video shows is going to be the traffic flow of the area with exit 21 closed. And you can see it's pretty free flowing. So we've talked quite a bit about the highway and all of the issues that the, uh, that the highway brings. It's not super, super exciting. So now we, we did want to focus our attention on what this is going to do to the local, uh, local roadway network. By closing exit 21, we realized that the traffic is going to go to exit 22. And what we did was we determined what the project area would be depending on, or we determined the project area based on the new travel patterns of, of uh, the vehicles getting to exit 22. So the project area is described as uh, we're looking at we're looking at uh, South Main Street to the east, Meadow and Bank to the west, West Liberty to the south, and Grand Street to the uh, to the north are the project areas or the pro the project limits. The project is going to include new traffic signals at all the locations that sh are shown in in yellow. The yellow stars are the traffic signals that are included with this uh, project and the Three traffic signals uh, shown in purple are three traffic signals that are included in a separate project, but we are working in conjunction with that project so that everything works properly together. Uh, we're going to be including signal phasing and timing improvements as well as, uh, as well as pavement marking repositioning or reconfiguration of certain lanes at the intersections for intersection improvements. We've also identified certain areas of, uh, for urban, uh, urban design improvements or urban design opportunities. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the project limits of South Main and West Liberty were identified as areas of, uh, for urban design opportunities, as well as Meadow Street up here to the, uh, to the north. And a third area that we've identified for urban design opportunities is the underpass at 84. What we are anticipating adding to the project are bike and improvement or bike and pedestrian improvements uh, along South Main and West Liberty and also up along uh, Meadow Street. We're also wanting to incorporate some aesthetic improvements such as public art. And uh, we also want to in include landscaping wherever we can add landscaping and greenery. And Wayfinding signage. We found that exit 22 lacks wayfinding signage for all the uh, improved or increased traffic that's going to be taking exit 22. We're also going to be improving the lighting at the 84 uh, underpass. We recognize that when we start improving the traffic or the uh, bike and ped traffic through the area, we want to make this area as safe as possible. And we recognize that the underpass at 84 is a, a bit dark, so we're going to be improving the lighting at the underpass. Uh, another thing that we're going to be working on is formalizing the parking. Uh, right now, parking is not well defined, so we're anticipating improving the, uh, the pavement markings here to better define the parking along South Main as well as West Liberty. And finally, the bus shelters. We're going to identify those bus stops that have uh, 
a high level of usage. And where feasible, we are going to uh, be providing bus shelters at those bus stops. But the most important thing I want to point out with this slide is that we are working, the team here is working in collaboration with the city of Waterbury. So any decision that gets made is not made in a vacuum. The team is making decisions in collaboration with the city of Waterbury. So as I described, we are looking at uh, certain locations for urban design opportunities. And I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, decorative plantings and greenery wherever we can, where it's feasible to add some landscaping. We're also going to be looking at that underpass lighting at 84. And this is important, the wayfinding signage. We are going to be working closely with the city to develop uh, some wayfinding signage uh, at exit 22 because the city recognizes that that's another gateway to the city. So we're going to be providing uh, ample wayfinding signage. Bike and ped improvements at the intersections, we're going to try to make these crossings as safe as possible and also ADA compliant. We're going to provide public art where where we can or we're going to see where we can provide public art and as well as the bus shelters and benches to really create that that look that the city is going for much like East Main Street right now. So I've talked quite a bit about the improvements to the highway and to the local roads. The project benefits are by closing exit 21, the off ramp, by closing exit 21 off ramp, we're anticipating a decrease in about 10% of crashes in this area of exit, of exit 22. And as mentioned earlier, uh, we're also anticipating that the air quality in the area is going to improve because you don't have that congestion on the highway. Some of the other, sum uh, the summary of other expected benefits to the local roadway network, improved traffic operations. We're looking at nine intersections through the project area where we're going to be doing uh, intersection improvements, traffic signal upgrades. We're also going to be improving the safety to the, oh, sorry about that. Push the wrong, push the wrong button. There we go. We're going to be improving the safety for pedestrians and cyclists at those crosswalks and at the uh, intersections. And we're also going to be providing beautification by way of urban design, landscape, decorative plantings, and the wayfinding signage. But most importantly, let's discuss the travel times through the area with the closure of Exit 21. Currently, with Exit 21 open, if we start, we did an analysis, and starting at starting at Exit 20 from 84 eastbound, it takes approximately four minutes and 46 seconds plus another 27 seconds on the highway to get to the term to the to get to the end. Keep pushing the wrong button. It takes. Uh, sorry about that. To get to the end of the off ramp, it takes just about five minutes with the exit open. And then you add some travel time on the local road of almost two minutes. And it takes you about seven minutes to get to the train station from that starting point. Now, if we were to close exit 21 and compare this, the new travel path of taking exit 22, which would be you'd be on the highway for about 59 seconds and another travel time of about 30 seconds on the off-ramp. And then if you were to take a left up South Main and up through Grant, your travel time would be about four minutes. So about almost uh, three minutes savings time uh, to get to your destination point of the train station. And conversely, if you were to take a, uh, a right on South Main, if you decide to go that way to avoid Grant Street, you would be at about just under six minutes. Again, a, a little bit of uh, travel time savings there. So now I do want to uh, turn my attention to the anticipated timeline and the construction cost for the project. Back in February of this year and going into March, we did start the public outreach. We reached out to local businesses and residences with our fact sheets, telling them about the project and trying to solicit feedback for the project to incorporate into our design. 
Uh, we're currently in March with the concept public information meeting, and we're going to continue on with our preliminary design and going into the uh, the June time frame of June of this year, where we're going to uh, host host another public information meeting when the design is a little further along, and we hope again to keep receiving comments from the public to incorporate into the design. Uh, and finally, we are anticipating a design completion of 2024 and with a construction time frame uh, going into the 2025 construction season and anticipating a two-year season to get all of this work completed. We are anticipating a construction cost. Right now, with just the concept level design that we have, we're anticipating about a 20 to $25 million construction cost, but that is going to start uh, as the design progresses, we are going to be uh, fine-tuning that number as well. And with that, I turn it back to Anna, where she'll tell you how to stay involved in. Thank you. So uh, first, please don't forget to share your input about the exit 21 the removal of the exit 21 off-ramp by April 10th. And there's many ways that you can um, send your comments, whichever way is most convenient to you. You can use the form on our website. You can leave a message on our comment line. Um, you can send us an email, and you can send us US postage uh, service mail. The April 10th date is, is only for the SEPA comments. Um, or deadline. It's only for the SEPA comments. As John Dean noted, you can s leave us comments, ask us questions anytime uh, about the NUMIX program project. If you did not get one of these, it, it has all the different ways to contact us. Please be sure to take one on your way out. Um, as far as next steps, we anticipate having the second meeting for this project in June or July probably here, depending on the feedback we get, if people thought this was a good location. The topics will include uh, an overview of the public comment we received from SEPA, as well as delving into the urban design opportunities and getting public feedback on that. And then, of course, uh, Q&A and next steps. So I am going to hand it over uh, to John Dean again the project manager to facilitate the question and answer session. And as a reminder, if you don't want to speak into a microphone, my colleagues will uh, say the question for you. Okay, thank you, Anna. So yeah, if anybody has any questions or comments, please raise your hand and we can, we can come to you with the microphone. My name is James Peck, and I actually misspoke a little earlier. Uh, I really love this project. I think we should definitely uh, go forward with this. I live in Town Plot, right where the where you mentioned the uh, on ramp to ID4 eastbound that's been closed for a while. And my my question is, I have to think. I thought I wasn't going to be the first one. Just give me a second. For the road improvements, since we haven't you haven't talked much about it, it has to be in the design process still. What are they going to include other than the intersections? Like they're obviously going to be smart cameras, uh, better lighting for the pedestrians and bicyclists, better parking for cars. But just what kind of aspects are you trying to input into the new layout of the local road network? Great. Um, yeah, thank you for that question. Um, I will just back up some slides here uh, just to have something to talk to. But, um, you know, one thing that we are here for tonight is to understand what the community wants to see. So um, we are expecting to um, 
construct pedestrian and bicycle improvements and not just um, those for the vehicles. So, you know, there, there are things that um, we're looking at, like uh, street furniture, plantings. Um, the, the roadway network is very constrained, so where possible, bicycle facilities. And again, those um, improved crosswalks and, and ADA uh, components at the signals, of course. Um, so again, you know, we're at, we're at such a conceptual level of design here with almost a, a blank slate, um, hoping to understand what, what the community wants to see. Thank you for the opportunity. You have to speak like right into the top. All right, stuff. sure. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to, to join in this process. Um, I appreciate the, the motivations that's going into this pro this project and um, uh, the importance of safety. As someone that has made the turns that you've described here hundreds of times in my life and hope to maybe in the future, uh, I don't really understand the timing that you mentioned in terms of getting to the station in seven minutes. In my experience, it's been about two minutes. Um, I, again, driving these roads every day would see how the proposed uh, changes would uh, add actually many more minutes in my own experience. Unless one is able to hit every single light there, that looks like a 10 minute drive to me. Um, maybe with new lights and everything. Also, it's gonna force a lot of traffic through downtown, through the, through that Grand Street there uh, where we've had a bunch of, you know, traffic trouble in the past. Okay, um, Rudy, do you want to do you want to handle that one? I'll, I'll give that a start. Um, the important thing to notice here, though, is the amount of time that is spent. Whoop, The amount of, is the amount of time that is spent on 84 in the year 2031. We're expecting, um, our models are showing us that this will fail at this point, that we'll have the congestion. Uh, yeah, just one other comment, that this ramp is actually used by a lot of folks coming up Route 8, south from uh, Route 8 North. So you come up eight, and then you get on to 84, and then you immediately get off. So it's the best way to get to this part of town from Route 8 without going through local roads. So if you close that up, then you're going to have to get off a whole bunch of, you have to get off one exit earlier from Route 8. Or uh, Correct, but also, I mean, the congestions won't just be on I-84 eastbound, as we're showing that time difference. The analysis and it's not included within the slides but because of those conflict points right here that's starting to congest the traffic it backs the traffic back up this ramp also so those people will be sitting in the same amount of travel time if not more if you're coming up route 8 and looking to get off that way also I don't know if I fully answered your question if you have more Well, we're looking at the year 2031. Right, I understand. Yeah. yeah. And we're looking at other traffic signal improvements and then the improvements to the highway with exit 21, you know, eliminating those conflict points, getting more better free flow, less traffic congestion on the highway system. Uh, yeah, I, without access to, you know, the nice modeling systems that you have, I, you know, couldn't comment on that. I'm just giving you sort of my practical real life experience driving on these roads every day. Understood. Hello again. Hello again. Uh, I'd like to continue off of kind of what he was saying, but my, my personal experience going on to, to Route 8 to the exit 21, uh, obviously the 2031 uh, uh, simulation, but all the times I've tried to merge on and off with the weave mechanic that you have, there's a lot of problems with that. And I, I personally don't think that there should be a big problem 
getting rid of exit 21 I think exit 22 would be able to suffice I mean it's been closed for three years and I just came down it to come to this meeting and it hasn't been a huge problem so I suck at asking questions I'm sorry uh, My, okay, adding on to what I said earlier about all the traffic improvements, which you'll be able to answer with the intersections. Are the intersections, since they're going to be safer, are there going to be road elements in place to prevent people from blowing through red lights, people from not looking out for pedestrians, bicyclists, stuff like that, where there's a lot of collisions in that area? Um, yeah, you know, at, at this time, um, things like red light cameras are not uh, permitted by state law, and that may change. That may change one day, but um, the the intersections are designed such that there is a, a lag time between the red and when the when the other light turns green. So that that is a safety feature. Any other? Hi, uh, my name is Stephanie Harris. I'm with the Manitouk Museum. We're a cultural institution in downtown Waterbury. Um, so currently, a lot of our visitors coming from that direction are taking exit 21. And my question is, uh, during that two-year construction period, uh, I'm just wondering if you have any anticipation on what the effect might be on traffic and congestion while you're trying to work through the construction process. Yeah, so great question. Um, we always uh, we will come up with a plan to try to handle traffic and, and keep it flowing smoothly um, during construction. Um, as you noted, there's going to be some work going on in Exit 22 as part of this project. It may occur at nighttime. We don't know that yet. Um, but yeah, thank you for that comment. We will always try to maintain traffic um, flowing during peak tr peak hours. In the front, there's a question here. Hello. Hello. Okay. My concern is your two minutes and 52 seconds is probably going to be twice that much. Because if you hit the red lights, you're going to have to stop at South Main, Union Street, Bank Street, Leavenworth Street, and then you get down to Meadow Street. If you take out Our Lady of Lord's Church to put the exit off of Route I-84 I West, then there's gonna have to be another light there. So I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen there. Dear time, I don't trust that. But my main concern is the lane closures. I've been having trouble since September taking the interchange from Route 8 South to 84 East. I have to go to work at 5 o'clock in the morning, so my exit has been closed. Route 8 South, exit 31, to get to 84 East. So I want to know how much longer I'm going to be having trouble getting off that exit to get on the highway, because it takes me 20 minutes extra time to get to work when I have to get off and go through downtown and the Meadow Street entrance hasn't been open, so I got to keep on going all the way through town to Hamilton Avenue to get on the highway and drive to Bristol. From September through December, then they stopped the construction, but today they closed it again. So again, today I was late for work, 20 minutes. If that's going to be a constant thing during your construction, I'm going to have to sell my house and move. I'm sorry, there's one other thing I'm trying to think of. Yes, yeah, so when they open up the highway, the police block the traffic. So then I'm sitting in one spot for 20 minutes waiting for them to open up the exit so I can get on the highway. I can't even get off to go through downtown. So my concern is the lane closures and the exit closure right there. OK, 
Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll just say real quickly that um, right now we're only looking at the off ramp exit 21 from 84 eastbound. Um, Our Lady of Lords is not at this time um, going to be impacted. But David's going to answer your questions about the lane closures. Well, I, I don't have the complete answer. I do know that the rehab project is scheduled to be completed this year. And that rehab project is separate from our project. That rehab project is giving us 25 more years of service life. So hopefully there will be limited construction on the main line until we come back out to do the reconstruction so that we're completed by the year 2045. Are there any, any more any more questions? And we'll be here for some time afterwards as well. Um, yes, sir. Thank you. Good evening. I'm just curious. Have any improvements been made to Exit 21 in the last two years? Um, I, I don't believe so, no. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, just to um, just to note that that bridge, the exit 21 bridge, was scheduled for a rehabilitation to extend its service life, um, but that project has been um, put on hold while this this project is in development to close it. Thank you. That being said, this is not Star Trek. And the needs of the many do outweigh the needs of the few. So this is a project that should be done. Thank you. Thank you. OK, this, this time I tried to make a little sheet of questions to ask. Um, so since the ramp's going to be closed, uh, it's probably something you haven't talked about, but is I reckon the ramp is going to get removed, correct? Yes, that's okay. the plan. Um, is there any developable opportunities that will be available once the ramp is removed? Maybe a surface parking lot or something like that? Yeah, we're currently looking to see what could be done with that area in the future. Okay, and then the second question is I saw in the drawing that the exit 22 will be expanded to have two lanes. Are they really necessary to have two lanes um, for that exit? Yes, yeah, it would, it would help the traffic flow up on the main line as well as the additional traffic that would be using that ramp and the additional space to um, allow cars to queue at the signal at the bottom. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, I got off at exit 22 today, and currently I don't believe that it's wide enough to hold two lanes. So I don't know. I don't know if you're going to be widening it or just restriping it, because that I think will be problems. And from what I heard, I believe you're going to be reopening the entrance from Highland Avenue. Okay, yes. thank, thank you. Yeah, th thank you. Yeah, just to address that quickly, um, the the ramp is currently wide enough. the The shoulders will be um, will be narrow, but it it does have enough width to carry two lanes. And just to, in case my reply didn't get caught by the mic, the Highland Ave on ramp is going to be is going to be reopened potentially this spring. Are there any further questions? No. In the back. Oh, again. Uh, is there going to be another, is there going to be an action plan coming up into the future about the Highland ramp to get removed, question mark? Or is that going to stay for good? 
So um, I, I will use this opportunity to plug again the, the new mix study that's looking at the long-term future of um, the interchange as a whole with the mix master. So um, the goal overall is to simplify the on and off ramps um, entering, entering and exiting the highway. So um, really that's all I can say at this time. There's a lot of different alternatives that are being considered and um, many different ramp configurations that we're looking at, but um, I will say that the, the goal is to simplify and, and remove some of the ramps coming on and off the highway. All right, I will, I will definitely be at that meeting then. Can you? Can you tell me, at this point right now, will the main line 84 of the westbound, eastbound, and all the entrance and exit ramps receive improved lighting? Because right now, the whole area is very dark. I know there's construction going on, and it's not complete yet, but will the completed project show improved lighting throughout? Yes, improved lighting is part of the rehabilitation project that's currently ongoing, so new LED luminaires will be installed. And also for exit 22, because there, are, there will be quite a bit of uh, traffic exiting on an exit ramp, so that, that will need good lighting. Yes, I imagine that, that will be part of our project um, in later stages to, to look, at, look at lighting on exit 22. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, thank you all again for joining us this evening. Um, so in, in the packets that we've handed out are all the different ways you can provide comments. So um, if you think of something later, please feel free to um, check our website or send me an email, um, call, the, call the hotline. And again, the SEPA scoping comments are going to be accepted until April 10th, but we will still be accepting comments certainly after that point and please check our website for updates on upcoming meetings as well. And we, we will be here by the boards for some time still, so you know, feel free to come by and, and talk to us. Thank you again.